and I actually served at two sites this year. So I served at the Learning Bridge, and then the second half I served at Reba Early Learning Center. So both of those are nonprofit preschools. Um, and my role in my second site has been as an administrative assistant, but I've also been working in the classroom, uh, assisting the teachers and teaching preschool kids. So I chose to do a year of service because I really wanted to become part of Evanston and to give back. Um, after evacuating from Hurricane Katrina, uh, I had a really difficult time feeling connected. Um, I moved over 17 times in six months. I lived in three different states and Evanston has been the longest place I've ever lived since I was 18. Um, and so being able to serve with AmeriCorps gave me this really amazing opportunity to connect with and serve my community. Challenges. This was definitely a challenging year for all of us. <laughs> um, uh, it was very unique situation to me to work with so many different supervisors. It's a little bit different from like working retail and working in an animal hospital and places like that, um, where you have different people from actually different organizations um, that you're reporting to. So that was new and unique. Um, but I'm, it was great learning how to do that. <laughs> um, maintaining personal boundaries was really important uh, for me and standing up for myself when those lines were crossed. Um, that became a really big thing for me. Um, it was also a very emotional year for me. Um, when I went through Katrina, uh, I had started as a school teacher and I had settled into my classroom and I had met my kids and I got to know the staff and then all of a sudden Katrina hit and my life changed overnight. And it happened to me again. And it's, it felt a lot like I went through that for a second time this year. Um, I, I worked at a site. I got to know everyone there. Um, the program director, I adored her. And she I consider her my mentor. And uh, I really liked the kids. And I got to know the family. And I had a lot of emotional investment in this major project that I was doing. And then I went through this substantial trauma and then I had to walk away from what I was doing um, and start over. And so it was, it was a lot, it was a lot to go through. Um, it was really challenging. Um, and so I uh, started at another site, um, totally changed some of the work that I was doing. I started working with preschool kids, which I had never uh, really done before. I didn't know anything about preschool age children. Um, I had to get to know three different sets of teachers, three different sets of students, and three different classrooms. Um, so it was a lot, um, but I've learned a lot too. So, and it's helped me figure out what I really am passionate about as well. So it's actually like really amazing and wonderful that this happened. <laughs> and then as I got settled into my new site, <laughs> Then a pandemic happened and I found myself um, switching again and learning how to teleserve and learning how to uh, serve the school and serve my community in a brand new way again. And so it was all about adaptation. That's the word that I think describes this year the most is it has been a year of adaptation. And not only did I have to uh, adapt to what was happening within the program, but I had to adapt to the world changing outside as well. You know, we all had to grocery shop different and spend time with our friends different and communicate with our families different. So it was a really amazing year. So some of my accomplishments pre-COVID-19. Um, I created a digital databases to expand the capacity of the uh, first program that I was at. I assisted with the Learning Bridge fundraising event that brought in um, the, oop, I can't see it, <laughs> the record amount of donations for the school. 
Um, I designed a set of celebratory uh, enamel pins for the program. I redesigned the school disciplinary forms, performed as the family engagement and communication coordinator, and recruited high school volunteers for after school care. I also started working on a CRSM um, in Salesforce and put a lot of time into that, but unfortunately I wasn't able to see that fully through. Post COVID-19, I created social media on YouTube to support and inform parents and children during the pandemic. Um, team Puppet <laughs> prepared and delivered a webinar to staff and parents on trauma-informed care. I created digital databases to increase the capacity of the new school program, uh, assisted in the preparation and reopening of REBA during COVID-19, and I created a digital data gathering tool to assess children for kindergarten readiness, which now that our school's back open, I'm very excited to start using and see how that project's gonna pan out. So from the AmeriCorps cohort, I learned each of their personal stories and their goals. I learned about their resiliency, their stamina, and their courage. I learned to be myself and to follow my heart. And I also learned that there's always room for me to do more. Through this year of service, I also learned that I love working with preschool kids. <laughs> um, love, love, love it. Uh, this was my first experience ever working with young children. I've never even babysat before. I don't know how to change diapers. So this was totally foreign to me and I absolutely love it. Um, I learned that I am an educator. Um, and that teaching is definitely where I belong. Um, I learned that I'm part of a really amazing and caring community of people that live around me. Um, and I learned that I'm capable of making a difference. So from United Way training and with Freda, um, local, I know there's that locus of control again, right? Looks like we all love that so much. It's such a great concept for us to learn. Um, I learned to finally value and use LinkedIn. <laughs> um, that's always been a tough one for me. I've never really liked it. I'm still, I'm sort of not really using it, but I'm going to, I promise. <laughs> um, I also learned how to write a great resume for the digital age. Uh, I learned how to organize and manage my time better, which is really, I'm now seeing how that's helping me write my curriculum. And I learned how to write SMART goals, which I have been using ever since. Those have been really amazingly handy. And then from the Evanston training, like training that I've done on site, I've learned how to use Excel to build databases. And we all know how, how difficult of a time I have with technology. <laughs> I researched and mapped the Illinois Early Learning uh, and Development Standards. I learned about trauma-informed care and how to be a more effective and empathic teacher. And that especially is from my mentor at Reba, uh, Betty Combs. She's been a wonderful, wonderful mentor. Um, and then through a Budsman training, I learned how to seek resolutions of problems and how to advocate for the rights of residents of long-term care facilities. So I wanted to highlight my end of the year celebration committee with Michelle. Um, my takeaways was that I really enjoyed working with Michelle. She is a fantastic leader. When I think of someone who is a leader, I think of Michelle. Um, I can't wait till, you know, she, she can open, you know. <laughs> um, it was a joy being able to collaborate and be treated like an equal. It was a really wonderful uh, collaboration. And we definitely had to be able to adapt to changing circumstances and stay motivated. As you all know, we kind of did a whole bunch of work in setting up a in, a, a, an insight celebration, and then we had to change midway and turn it into a virtual one. And so um, it was a lot for us to do. And, uh, we did it heroically. <laughs> we had to be organized and keep 20 steps ahead for an unseen future. And we kept things running smoothly by remaining lighthearted. And there's a big square in the way, practical and flexible. All right. So my goals, I had a big goal that I really wanted to learn how to type properly. <laughs> uh, heck. 
Um, and I was really trying to do 40 words per minute. Um, and I was able to learn the full keyboard without learning to look down at the keyboard. I managed to learn that part. <laughs> but I'm not quite at 40 words per minute. I think I'm about at like 23 right now, <laughs> halfway. Um, so, but my career goals ended up changing. I'm still going to focus on the typing because I'm going to still need to type. Um, but I have a new goal of preparing a portfolio in order to go to graduate school. So I've been doing some, some other goals along with the typing. Um, but I did learn that it takes way more work to learn to undo something than to just learn it the right way in the first place. It is so much harder to do it that way. So learn stuff now while you're young, okay? <laughs> I also learned that it doesn't feel like work if you're following your heart and you love it. So. Legacy. Oh, cute. <laughs> Um, I'm leaving behind um, a fundraising event program, newsletters, invitations, letters, badges, and other social media materials. Um, a set of pins that were celebrating the learning bridge, multiple databases that have expanded the capacity of two early childhood programs, a digital puppet show that supports and informs children and their parents about COVID-19, team puppet, <laughs> a digital cloud-based tool, oh, oh, that's okay, uh, a digital cloud-based tool based on the Illinois Early Learning Development Standards that assists in collecting data to determine kindergarten readiness for preschool kids. After AmeriCorps, I'm going to continue working for the Reba Early Learning Center as an administrative assistant and teacher. I'm going to continue volunteering for Natural Habitat Evanston. I'm going to continue volunteering for the Illinois State Long-Term Care Ombudsman Program. I'm going to start a nonprofit that collects and distributes art materials for children and students living in Evanston. It's my new project. I'm very excited to get started on that. And I'm going to begin working on my master's degree in art education. And that's it. Ooh, I was fast. <laughs> Thank you so much, and I'm ready for your questions. <laughs> Thank you so much, Danielle. Uh, I will kick it off with a comment just sharing, just saying, wow, uh, about your next steps, and congrats on being hired on uh, with Reba. Uh, I'm, I'm loving the theme of today. People have been offered full-time roles or part-time roles either with your site or by way of connection um, via your experience or relationships. And heads off to you all. You put in great work. And Danielle, you have put in great work in two uh, organizations this year. So I just want to start off with congrats and also on your a future nonprofit organization. So you might have some potential board members around this call here. <laughs> Anyone will uh, have any questions for Danielle or comments? I'll hop in with a question. Um, I wanted to know what you think your approach to adversity is, specifically in relation to like the troubling experience you had in your first sight, how do you feel like you grew through that and what you feel your approach to adversity is now? I, I feel like it's like I, we kind of talked about telling our ourselves at the beginning of the year what to do and to kind of, you know, um, and I, like for me, it's telling myself, go back to education go back to your center, go back to what you love. I feel like now that I'm back to my core and back to what I care about and I know who I am and I know what I'm doing and I know what my goals are, like it's much easier for me to stand up for myself and to ask for what I want and to know where I'm going and to, to handle things, I think. I mean, there's some things that just nobody can handle, <laughs> and there's that, and then there's lower levels of that, so, <laughs> but I, 
I, I have so much more confidence now. It's like the minute I'm in the classroom with the preschoolers, I'm, my confidence level is through the roof. I mean, it's um, night and day for me. So having that, walking in there and getting to experience that confidence and getting to experience that love and that joy and it, being able to carry that around with me instead of like, what am I doing? Where am I going? I don't know yet. I don't know. I don't know what I like. I don't know what I'm doing. You know, um, that I think that's been really central to helping me. Thank you. Anyone else have questions? Oh, Michelle. Question. Um, <laughs> hi, Danielle. That was a wonderful presentation. Um, and I, so I just wanted to know, you have lived a lot more life than some of us other cohort members. Um, and so I was wondering if there was still anything that you felt like you learned about yourself um, this year that like you were surprised about yourself from this year um, that you want to take with you into your future wonderful roles and plans. Yeah, I, um, I, I, I think seeing myself as a teacher and seeing and getting feedback as a teacher and working with the preschool kids and having a mentor and being in an environment where I have more feedback. Um, it's when I was teaching like 15 years ago, I had very little feedback, was in really stressful situations. And I was just struggling. And um, so I've, it's, I've had to come a long way and do a lot in my life and, and read a lot of books and figure out what was troubling me and what I was having a hard time with to finally find what I was looking for. Because it's like a lot of the research that I've been doing on like trauma-informed care that wasn't coming out and being published until I left education. And so I feel like I've learned a lot about being an educator that I didn't get before. That's just changed me a thousand times as a teacher and what I should be focused on. And working with the age group that I have has also changed me as well because of the, the way I'm interacting with them and just the you, you can just outpour your love to preschoolers, you know, with, with high school kids, they're like, why are you trying to like me? You know, it's a diff, it's different. So, um, speech answered your question. <laughs> okay. It's something that, sure thank you, Michelle. It's something that you said, Danielle, during your presentation, it struck me differently than our conversations that we've had over the year. It sounds like you have uncovered your purpose um, in life, if I can, you know, say it that way. Um, and what has that journey been like for you during this year of service? uncovering your purpose wonderful it's wonderful i mean i it it's it's so central to everything it motivates me it wakes me up every day it um it makes me make different decisions it uh like i have this joy that i'm that i have and, and i'm working towards and um it feels um, I, you know, it's like I have, I have per to have purpose in itself and to, to have, to have a joy for something and to be able to use that joy and share that joy. It's, it's like I said, you know, it's, it doesn't feel like work if you're, if you're, if it comes from a place of love and, and I know what I'm doing. It's like, it doesn't feel like work. It's I'm, I'm just in a, a joyful state. So it's, um, it's completely different. It's completely different from, from everything else that I've done. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Jackie, Caitlin, do either of you have a question or want to comment? I just commented in the chat here, but Danielle, uh -huh. I, I just think you, you're like exactly the person to teach preschool like it just like it just seems so perfect and I, I was 
I'm really surprised that that was not something you were engaged in before. I mean, I didn't know, I knew you were a teacher before, but um, I think I think not everybody is called to that work. And I, I, I mean, I know I only know you in a limited capacity, but you seem extremely called to that work. So I think it's fantastic that you've had that experience and come to that conclusion as well. It's, um, I'm, I'm really glad to see that you overcame all the things <laughs> that happened this year to, to get to that point. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Caitlin. Anyone else before we close out? Yeah, well, Danielle. Oh. Hey, Danielle, it's Jackie. Um, congrats on everything. And it is exciting to hear that you're going to be staying at Reba. Um, I think you mentioned that you, that they had reopened and you helped with that. Is that correct? Yes. I'm just curious, how is that? I mean, I'm, I guess I'm asking because I'm a, my selfishly, I'm a parent of small children. Yeah. I'm just so nervous about school restarting. And I know it's a slightly different setting, but I was just curious what that experience was like in terms of reopening and just sort of maybe some insights you can give to, to people like me who are a little nervous. It is, it's, it's, it is, it's nerve wracking. Um, we're all, um, we basically clean all day long. <laughs> So we're constantly disinfecting everything. A lot of it is uh, keeping the kids separated from one another um, and trying to focus on our relationships with them and making sure that they're calm and that they feel comfortable and that they feel safe. Um, it's been a lot of strategizing, procedures. Um, we have tons of documents from the state, from the CDC, from DCFS. Um, we've had meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting, we're, and it's constantly changing. So we're adapting, and we're continually trying to find the most the most careful version of whatever we're given, just in case. And um, and it's and then at the same time, we're reading in the news about how there's more and more cases, and there's this kind of expectation of when's the school going to get closed again. So it's crazy it, it is it's crazy uh, <laughs> but, um, the kids though there is something to argue for the benefits to the kids in being around the other kids in socializing and getting back into having a relationship with the teachers um, we saw a lot of setbacks with the preschoolers in their language skills and in their abilities to manage themselves and in socializing. And a lot of parents have been reporting to us that they've backtracked. Yeah. And so having them back in school, um, so it's, we are, it's weighing the pros and cons and wishful thinking and strategizing. And if push comes to shove, yes, we'll close again, and that's what we're gonna have to do. And um, so it's, it's a lot, it's a lot to think of. Um, I, it, there's no real good answer, yeah. I think, right now. But um, look, thank you for sharing, and I do appreciate the, the sort of the call to, you know, it, it is important to socialize, and I think definitely that's one of the things my child probably misses the most. <laughs> Not the academics, but definitely the socializing with his peers, but thank you for sharing, and again, thank you for your, your work, especially in this, in this era of just uncertainty um, with young children. Thank you, Jackie. Anyone else? Last, last call. <laughs> All right. Well, Danielle, again, thank you. I really mean that. <laughs> uh, this year was a year uh, for you. And so I thank you for sticking it out um, and turning lemons into lemonade, seriously. Um, and uh, to continue to move forward um, and everything that you're doing. 